Miss Michelle Mybell, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Good. And I bet our, our boy's doing good. He's doing awesome. He's bouncing today. He's like excited and happy and he good. says he loves you. I love um, you. He, he's doing this, doing this with his shoulders and he's like, hi, mama. Oh, <laughs> oh, you little flirt. Um, all right. Well, we are going to do something that's been often requested and that is uh, interview Metatron and I'm telling you I thought when people mentioned Metatron I thought that's some transformer thing or like like a robot I, I have no idea who this is but then I find out he is um, one of the archangels or whatever so mm -hmm. sorry about my ignorance but it's there and you just have to deal with it so can you bring in Metatron he's here he's here what do, what do you um, see or, or feel or both? Well, I'll tell you, it's very interesting because I have seen images circulate about what he looks like. And today, what I'm seeing is I see a very tall column of light. Interesting. Um, he's showing as a great big tall, like very, very bright um, white with a little bit of a bluish purple haze okay. to the outside of it. Mm -hmm. um, what I feel is when he came in to start to join with me just before we came on together, the energy, and often I'll feel spirit come through the top of my head or through one side or the other, where he's come in almost like I'm having a, a vice or something just kind of placed on top of me. It's a very strong, present energy, okay. um, very loving, but... Whereas I felt some of the archangels that feel um, maybe a little bit softer, mm -hmm. he, it's not that he doesn't feel soft and loving, but he is a little bit like getting down to business, like oh, okay. direct. Oh, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, Metatron, can you tell us about yourself, your history, who you are, what you do, what you're here for? Just, I'll, I'll let you have the, it'll be open mic for a while. It's the least I could do. I mean, you are Metatron. Eric goes, I am Megatron. Mega? Is <laughs> it oh. Metatron? Oh, no, it okay. is Metatron, but Eric's being here. Eric's so like silly. doing that big voice like Megatron. Yes, <laughs> yes Eric. Um, Thanks for bringing uh, so me Metatron, in, baby. Thank you. For oh, he, said, he, said, he says, You're welcome, Mama. You're and welcome. And Metatron, thank you for uh, coming in too. But okay, you had the floor. He says, thank you. Um, he's addressing it as greetings. He says, greetings to you. Greetings, Elisa. Greetings, everyone. He's saying that this is timely, um, that his visit is very much today. He says, uh, not so much about me as I want it to be about humanity. And I want it to be about... Um, what's going on in the world. But first, he says, I will explain a little bit about who I am, if you're not aware. And he, he says, I've been called an archangel, a being of light, uh, a transmitter. He says, I am the being of worlds between worlds. I am creation. And he says, uh, yes, he's just adding that he is known as an archangel, but he stands a little bit separately from that. And I'm just asking, what does he mean from that? And he says that he is an archangel that has had human existence. That really? has, um, he says, um, ascending so he's not saying like ascending from one life he shows ascending through human life why um, he's calling himself as a human being he was a prophet that he ascended to be the key of creation that he's showing himself as working with God or the source with the universe that he is part of part of creation 
and that that is part of in each and every one of us. Okay. Um, he keeps saying Enoch. Oh, okay. And I, I had question because I have heard this before and I personally don't know anything about this. Was that your, so your I'm just asking, name? Is, I'm sorry. Was that your name when you were a human? He's saying that he would be most recognized as um, ascending as the ascending from the prophet of Enoch, but he's not saying it's one life. He keeps saying, "Come from more than one life." Okay. So they're being um, uh, incarnating into more than one life to ascend. And as he's saying that, he's saying the ascension within each one of us, that that's what he is, that the purpose of his being is in regards to creation and ascending. And he keeps saying world between worlds. And so I'm asking him just to describe that a little bit deeper to us as it's a little bit vague. Mm -hmm. But um, what exactly does that mean? And he's saying that if we look at the patterns in life, he is the pattern. He says, I am the pattern as we all are the pattern. But he's talking about joining our humanness to the heavens, that he is the link between oh. the human world. I see. So that's why you and started, the heavens. Okay. So that's why you started out human. Yes. In multiple. Yes. Okay. And yes. um. So uh, who are you? Where are you from? Okay, come from. Um, is it true that you are an ascendant of the prophet Enoch? Got that. These are blog member questions, by the way. Um. What exactly is the Metatron's cube? never heard of that so he says eric eric's got a rubik's cube doing uh, this so fast oh, looking a rubik's cube. That's cute um metatron says geometry uh sacred geometry he says the cube is the the pattern within us the pattern of life um, he's talking about like a grid, um, a crystal grid. Um, okay, let's just see if you can make some sense out of that. So he's saying that the cube is the, uh, when he was talking about his pattern or his connection, the cube is what we create or our link within ourselves of our humanness to heaven, uh, to our higher selves. He's talking about it being the bridge of ascension and that this is something that we can inv invoke with him within us um, because he's not showing it as, um, as something that we physically, it's not something physical. Okay. That it is, um, he's saying metaphorically, it is a pattern. And he shows me that it's linked to sacred geometry okay. and he's showing numbers and he's also showing um, crystals. He's saying amplifying, it amplifies our power within ourselves. The, the crystals or the, cute, the, the, the energetic pattern that is the cube? It amplifies. Oh, okay. So how how can how and where can it be um, um, accessed? Somebody wants to know. Inquiring minds want to know. And he says uh, that every single human being, every being, every individual has the power to be able to invoke this within themselves. And he's showing the joining of the higher self to the lower self. And to invoke this, he says, to invoke him, he is a representative of the power. And he makes a point of saying that he doesn't, he's not the power. Um, he is our power. It is a representation. So to invoke this within us is to invoke the knowledge, 
to invoke the wisdom and to also begin the process to amplify the process of our ascension. And he's just saying that this is the time on our planet right now where he is doing, um, he's saying the most, the power of his work, the power of invoking him and for our spiritual path and for ascension. Cause he shows me that the cube, um, and he sh he's showing me, um, just to describe, it looks like, um, I keep seeing like, um, uh, what is that, octagon, right? I see okay. all these different, um, the shape, but it's okay. rotating in 3D. Oh. And he shows it as an arrow going up, an arrow going down, and it's within our body, within our aura. And okay. so he said that in invoking him, invoking a connection with him, can light up and ignite this within ourselves. How do you to do help that? Help us ascend. Yeah. How, what, give me some practical steps. What's number one? Um, Metatron, I ask, blah, 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 I me mean, what? Yes, he says intention. So the, the first thing is the intention of what are you calling for? Why are you calling for it? Ah. He says that he is a willing participant to anyone who is prepared to continue their journey, to enhance their journey. Um, he says practical steps. He's actually showing um, lighting a candle, preparing your environment, in what preparing way? your mind um, uh, for peace, um, oh. to create a space for yourself. Uh, he says that there's many different ways that any human being can invoke the power of Metatron, the power of what he brings to the table. And this really is by calling upon him. And he's saying that his intensity um, that many of us can feel him. And if we're able to quieten ourselves, we'll be able to feel his presence, that his presence is very powerful and very strong, and that we can feel this within our body. He says when calling upon him and invoking him into our life, um, he says, I'm already present. It's turning up the fire. And he shows like a, um, like a furnace and mm -hmm. turning up the fire flame in the furnace so we're just cranking up the flame within us that then promotes us to be able to release what is no longer um, able to exist in our present moment so some of the patterns some of the things that we have um, grown to think is us or grown to think is part of our life that this process can then begin but he says it's as simple as you choose it to be. Uh, it's not complicated. He said there really is no specific step one, two, and three, because it's more about mm, following, the, following the intention and what you want the intention for and then communicating with him, following through with the communication. He okay. says, do you, call, do you call upon me? And will you listen? Mm. And will you take this? Will you take this within you? Well, do you? Um, because it's one oh, thing. To bring, well, he just says it's one thing to bring within the presence. And how will you invoke that presence into your life? All right. So I'm getting that basically he's a representation of our own inner power. But are, are there any? Is it automatic? Like when we do connect with him, the 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 releasing the patterns that no longer serve us? Or do you have to think, well, I want to get rid of this. I don't want to get rid of that. My mother-in-law, she needs to go. I'm kidding go about the last one. <laughs> he, he says, well, there are two systems at play. He says, so if we look at, and he's pointing to, so our higher self, the higher part of ourself, that there are natural patterns and blueprints because he's saying that he is part of the blueprint of creation. 
Okay. So the natural ascension then uh, begins to play in our life, which has already been doing. And he's saying that this is not only for the human being, but he's showing for the earth, oh. that this is um, for all of creation. Oh, so good. it's um, it's a natural progression that is happening to all of creation. And then the work as the human being is then to be present with that, to be able to recognize what is happening in our lives and to be able to listen to ourselves when we see something or feel something that is no longer working in our life. So it's not so much about, he says, chasing something to figure out what to get rid of, but to allow the natural flow uh, of the ascension process to continue within ourselves. He's saying that right now um, he's raising the volume. So he's doing this and saying raising the volume as in this is happening to mm. the highest degree at this point and will continue in these next years to come. Do you also, do you also include other planets in, in what you do? Or is it just the earth yes, and humans? Um, no, he's saying all of creation. Oh, all okay. That's creation. A, cover a lot. That covers a lot. Okay. Do we, are there any tools we can use to help like visualizations or crystals or hypnosis, meditation, anything that helps us connect easier, more easily with you? He says, oh, yes, absolutely. Um, all of those things are wonderful. He talks about the crystals that he has a, um, a, he says his energy charges crystals. He's showing me a clear quartz crystal, okay. um, an amethyst crystal. Mm. And he's saying, for example, um, he's saying grids. Um, so the earth, when we speak of sacred geometry and we speak of everything having patterns and he shows right down to the tiniest of flowers, Oh wow! everything that has the patterns. Yeah. And so he said, we can create these grids. Mm -hmm. We can create grids with crystals and put our intentions into these grids to continue our development. Are we looking to, um, what is it that we are working on in our life? What is it that we are naturally looking? Because he says he's also part of manifestation. Oh, so that would be creation. The passion within you, the manifestation. So it's about becoming clear on who it is that we are and using the power that he is able to invoke within us or strengthen within us and then applying that to using crystals or um, he says hypnosis, any of these other techniques are helpful for the human being to be able to clear space within themselves. So he, I get it. I, when I, he speaks about his power. Yeah, because I, I, I think we can kind of know, maybe subconsciously, who we are as an authentic self and what else has been layered on by external forces. Um, can you explain what the template for the ascended earth means, someone asks. Oh, wait, can we find the, how to do the grid uh, for you on Google, you think, or YouTube? <laughs> he says yes. Okay, I'll He look says it that he's all, over, he's all over the place. <laughs> he's all over the place. All right, so, um, yeah, what does the template of the ascended earth mean? The, an energetic sacred geom geometry pattern, energetic pattern? So he's saying um, to remember as we say this, that in answering this question to understand that when we say template or we say blueprint that these are more of a construct for us to be able to understand to put our human mind um, to categorize and put definition to what he is about to explain it's not a um, when he says template is not something hard and solid oh yeah but he says the template itself is what is in place so he says um he he says geometry but he's showing me um like i would call it graph paper but it's a very okay. light green like a um 
uh, etheric green in blackness and he shows it like graph paper as it's reaching out and he says this template is what is what is the um, set point for what our new earth is it is the ascension so when oh. he says world within worlds when he says uh, earth to heaven it's about bringing heaven on earth oh. that is his purpose nice um, his purpose is to assist with heaven on earth he says we are in this right now the earth is in her shift the beings on the earth the universe at large is in this shift to move to this template and so he says it's the guide it's the direction of who we are meant to be it is the guide and direction of what our earth is meant to be um and he says that he's showing um he shows me the grid and he shows me just a little dot and how the dot is moving mm. and it's moving to the other side and it it continues to turn because he says, um, I was just looking at it as something flat. And he says, it's something that's continuously moving. It's oh, continuously wow. rotating and moving. Okay. Somebody wants to know, is there a, wait. Oh, what is the best way to activate the Merkaba, M-E-R-K-A-B-A-H for our cells? I've never heard of that. So he's just going back to what we were just talking about with invoking him um, we can the Merkaba is something that he says it's within our aura so it's if he says if you imagine that each one of us have these templates they have these um, we have this structure within us and to activate it is to invoke him to be able to, in, um, and he says, drawing it, drawing these grids, these crystalline grids with crystals. He says that there are different processes to be able to invoke this within ourselves. Um, some will do it in different ways, but he says it's always through the intention. And he says not to mistake it with something that we are going to physically notice within ourselves it's something that we feel within ourselves that opens up that heaven and earth within us he says it's a traveling um it's a unit that we travel in and he's also saying adding to this about traveling to other dimensions or traveling to um like the akashic records like reaching into akashic records so he says this is like opening your no, not third eye. I just asked him if he meant third eye. But um, this is like opening up the higher self within us. But it invokes his energy. Okay. Can you help? Uh, the pattern, the if pattern we, within us. If we call upon you to help us activate that, will you? Or is that something you have to do solo? No, he says, of course, of oh, course, that this is what he's here to do. Um, he says, I would like to call it my, my passion, my, my job, my passion, my work, who I am. Okay, I'm applying for um, jobs because I miss medicine, just part-time like telemedicine. Can you help me get exactly what I need, please? I know I'm selfish. I'm answering, asking a question myself, but, but we're, we got Metatron here. No, Gosh, you just cut out on me a little bit. So I didn't cut you. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm asking Metatron if he will help me find a job that, that is, that fulfills everything I need. Cause I'm looking into just like a couple hours a day, uh, like telemedicine or something. Will you help me please? He says, he says he'd be absolutely happy too and he also says that he has already been oh, um good he's he's just saying that um he's talking about eric and just saying that eric has called upon his assistance so eric oh, has good. brought his oh thank yes. you eric he knows how much help but you need to bring in the big guys 
Uh, <clears throat> all right, somebody asked, why did God choose him, Enoch, thus making him Metatron? Or is, is that even the case? So, Well, he answers this as the same as, why did God choose Jesus? Why did God choose any of us for oh, what we do? Yeah. He says, it's, it's not a... Um, anything other than we are created to fulfill the purpose that is within our souls, within our passion, uh, within our hearts. And each one of us uniquely matches that in whatever way. And he's pointing to you and what exactly you said, looking for fulfillment. So he's saying this was his fulfillment. I see. That's pretty good. That's, that's a tall order. Um, what are you currently helping humanity or the collective with right now? Very quick answer. He says ascension. Okay. Um, within, within ourselves and as a planet, as a whole, as a collective. Do you have a message or advice for us in that regard? He says... Heaven on earth will never be found within war. Mm. Heaven on earth will never be found in war within yourself. Oh, God, yeah. Heaven on earth will never be found in war within each other. Mm. Heaven on earth will never be found in war of the world. And to find the peace, because he's putting a, uh, he puts a blanket over top of earth. And he just says, I am wrapping you with serenity. I am wrapping you with love. And I want you to know that the war within yourself is the most important war to dispel, to disband. Mm. Because with each human being finding peace within themselves, they will then be able to find peace in the brothers and sisters beside them. They will then be able to find peace throughout the world. Oh, he says that there is fear, mm. that there is um, much that is occurring in the world right now. And he wants to give a reminder that we have come so far that going backwards is not possible. And so he's reminding each and every person to continue to look forward in their lives and to not look in backwards to not look in the rear view mirror oh. as hard as that may be and he he puts a lot of um a lot of understanding around what is occurring in the world right now but he said this is also the most important message to understand because love really is what makes the change and love is far more powerful than any hatred love is far more powerful than we could possibly imagine mm -hmm. and when we choose to invoke that in everything that we do we then win because love will always win yeah yeah because fear you know that's there's a fear of scarcity like i'm i, I won't have enough i won't be powerful enough and that's that's all what war is about it's just the egos that want more or you know i don't know all right do you ha ha do you help the earth as a whole in in some way and are there some people who con who is who have contracted to help you in that he's calling um all my brothers and sisters he says and as he says that he points like this way and this way oh. as in uh the angels the spirits the other beings of light and he also is looking upwards and i see stars like up to the stars oh yeah so this is a um he says a project that has been in the making for a very long time mm. and as i may uh, he says fulfill my position in the earth that it is not something that I do alone. It is not possible to do alone as each one of us, it's about connection yeah. and connection in healing. Yeah. 
being the collective one, collective love. Um, is there anything you do to help particular, like, is there a specialty of yours, like, oh, you like to help kids with ADD or, uh, you know, help people with anxiety or, I mean, any, any individual favorites of yours or just anybody who calls on, on you? Uh, he says, um, he's saying magic manifestation, uh, creation. And he says, and that goes to any individual that has that burning within them. Mm. Any individual that calls upon him, he is able to help invoke power in them to be able to recognize these things within themselves. Cool. Now, somebody asked, and I have no idea who, uh, who this is. Does Metatron have a connection to O O P H A N I M? O P H A N I M. O P H A N I M. I don't know. What is that? I, don't know. I have no idea. He's not putting a lot of weight on it, but what he is saying is that, of course, there's a connection. But okay. He's not saying, um, okay, I don't know fine. if there's a story. He's giving me the sense that there's a story that's not quite. Oh, it's not okay. quite. That's fine. There's uh, a rumor that there's yeah. a celestial war or maybe one coming. Is that true? And if so, tell us about it. Please. I should say please. He's, he's referring back to what we had just said, and he said, uh, when we look at it in this way, um, are there beings that are present that are interested in um, demise or are interested in the earth not ascending? Yes, but he's showing this being across a, a point, um, being over a hump. Mm. He's not saying that there's not something that's going on, but not in the way that the human mind has created the story. Okay, good. All right, one person wants to know, what practical, practical advice can you pr provide to us on a day-to-day -day basis to help in our daily lives and our ascension? I mean, just a couple of things, maybe, because that could be a long list. Well, yes, it could. What's the most important, yes, what's the most important one, basically? He says, most importantly, to recognize the resistance within yourself. So when he says about looking back and looking forward, there is only now and there is only going forward. So what is being resisted in your life? What are you not willing to let go of? Because this is really the point of if you are not letting go the circumstances with you will continue to support you of letting go because he said the ascension process is happening. And so when we look at doing something practical in our life each and every day, he says the simple mathematics of this for every human being would to be very aware, very aware in what you do when you wake up in the morning. What do you think of when you wake up in the morning? Yeah, beware he says, your thoughts, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. he, and he's just also just adding, he says that um, he understands that this is something that gets repeated over and over, but he wants to give, um, he wants to give presence in this moment right now to awareness and to how important the awareness is for each of us because without awareness, Without awareness, we'll continue to cycle in patterns that are no longer working for us, um, creating our path as uh, having much more obstacle, having more difficulty than need be. Okay, interesting. Um, what happens to people who do not enter the ascension process? He says, whether a person consciously chooses to ascend or not, every human being is ascending. It, there is a natural pattern that happens, but it is the human being's choice. It is always the human being's choice, whether they choose to take the path within their heart 
or whether they choose to continue to cycle or continue to create life in the way that their free will. Okay. All right. Um, um, oh, yeah. go ahead. Well, he was, he was just saying that um, he was just showing me patterns. Um, no, it's okay. He's just going on and on showing me stuff. So I said, I'll stop. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Since uh, Metatron, you were once human, what is the process of becoming an angel if that is your ultimate goal? I mean, each of us, maybe somebody out there wants to be an angel. What's the ultimate goal? goal when you transition if, if that's what you want to be or is it even possible you know well he says that um, this is a controversial topic because uh, there are many that believe that it is not possible to be an angel and then there are many that call their loved ones an angel so he says let's take out the description of what we say an angel and let's say um, your will um, your will in this human life and the will that continues in you is to grow to the highest expansion that is available to you and to follow that path that continues to lead you in that direction and he says um, do do we look at ourselves with the label of angel outside of the physical body not necessarily but he says it's more of the energy that you continue to invoke within yourself. And that comes from who you are today and who you continue to be with your free will as your free will does not change as you transition. It's still available to you. Okay. Uh, do you also help uh, as a little side job, uh, you know, moonlighting, uh, do you help souls grow or cross over? Probably the first one, yes. I mean, you know, ascension that's growing. Do you also help them cross over, transition? Um, yes, he says um, he's talking about relationships that he, um, those that he has relationships with in the physical that sometimes he is called upon. Um, he says that that is not his main space. He says that's not my main well, thing. Well, okay. That's a little side job. But, yeah, but he but he is there as we all are. Okay. Um, somebody asked, uh, are you part of the creator race of beings who started us on this journey of limitation through belief, if that even exists? I mean, maybe we're supposed to have yeah. limitations through belief to have a more contrast and human experience. I don't know. But uh, you tell me, you're Metatron. He says yes, um, so he's bringing us back to um, being part of creation mm -hmm. and this being part of the experience and that through this experience and through that experience and what we are going through is where the growth comes from, is the desire of the soul. He says why this is so desired within humanity right now is because the soul is growing through this experience and that he is and has been part of that creation in the beginning, yes. Okay, are you also the celestial scribe, a, AKA the writer of the acoustic records? He's calling it, he is a bridge to the acoustic records. Mine needs um, a little erasing, he's okay? Also, I need, you need to get in that <laughs> library and just start erasing some shit right there in my acoustic records, but no. Can't be he's not saying that he's a he's a writer. He doesn't use the word a writer, um, but he does use the word creation and bridge with the Kashuk records. Interesting. Um, can you explain more? What, what do you mean by bridge? Um, he connects those uh, to the information of the Akashic records, um, creating the Akashic records. So. Um, he shows me with lives ascending and so he's showing me and this is very metaphorical because he's saying this is not exactly how it is but as we have gone through the lives that we have and we create these uh, experiences is how he wants to describe it that these experiences are imprinted 
and he says it's not as if it's stored in a big vault so to speak but there is a place that he has created um, a place that he's part of creating that uh, when he says bridge that he's able to help those reach into that part of themselves to be able to retrieve information so he's like a pathway to oh, i see interesting all right a couple more questions i think we're just gonna have a part two so we'll end off a little early um some light workers claim to be activators as such light language activators money activators abundance activators uh, and if so why are they chosen is is it something we all can do and if so how he says um first part of that question is he'll answer as the the soul that incarnates into this lifetime that is bringing um pieces of themselves from other lifetimes where they have uh, done this before where they have experienced this before they have knowledge within their dna so it's something that they are drawn to do that they have willed to do in this life or created to do and that this is very true for that but also he says we are creating and if so you choose to do that you can create that that there is um he's saying no uh number one and number five and number eight only you guys can do this oh he okay. says there are some that come into this life with it something that's more active within them so just as an ability that somebody would come in with where one would be a little stronger in this way and one would be in another and that many um of the lives of some of these people that do this there are experiences in their life that support them to have the wisdom and knowledge around this ability. Oh, I see. All right, last question for today. Is there a symbol we can recognize or look for that will confirm your presence? I mean, that, oh, that, that I, I see that cube over there. That means that he's around, or, or I guess that's what they're talking about. Um, he is saying right away, he's saying that the, the color, so he's showing purple and mm. a bluish color mm. uh, as I'm closing my eyes right now I can see this color and so he says uh, in meditation and closing your eyes when you invoke him that those that are seeing color will see his color um, he also says um, he's anywhere that creation is and if you call upon him he says it'll be whatever whatever sign or whatever works within your ability so whether you feel his strength whatever you see his strength and i'll just say because he's telling me to share this uh today when i was preparing to to channel for him i've got this this little um it's it's the i guess i don't even know if i'm saying cool. it right the merkaba or merkaba it's oh. a pendulum it's actually a little bit broken on one end but i've had it for quite a while and mm. this appeared okay i i did not have this out but this appeared in the middle of my room today that just lying is so on the bed cool. i already made my bed yes so God. that was his little symbol and so he just is saying um that there are many different ways that he will let you know that he's present and so it's up to each one of us to pay attention to open our eyes to these signs. Um, he also says that he works greatly with many, many light workers. Um, he is a very powerful and open being that is very much willing to help humanity. So it's very easy to invoke his presence and continue to work with him. Okay, so what about hearing? Is there, are there things we can hear to know that you're around? he says um uh vibrationally we may hear high-pitched ringing when okay. he is around um and interestingly enough and he's saying for me today because i noticed a very cold presence and i don't normally get that but before he came in i got a very icy presence and he's oh, just saying that cool. was something for me so he said when you're making the intention to call him in pay attention to what your environment is of okay. what's going on 
All right. Well, thank you, Metatron, and thanks for coming in. Hopefully, you'll agree to a curtain call because we have so much to learn from you. And thank you, Michelle, for being an awesome channel. My God, who can do this? Who can channel Metatron? Seriously. Thank you, Eric, for bringing our lovely Metatron in. And I'm glad that you're just not one of the Transformer cars on that Transformer movies, but it would be okay if you were. You'd still be cool to me. And you guys check out <laughs> Michelle at The Healing. I don't know why I always write like this when I'm doing your deal, okay? I don't know. T H E H E A L I N G H hyphen A R T dot com. And I will put it right here. And y'all, please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get my ass up over 100,000 subscribers and you can help. I don't know why that's special, but somebody told me it is. All right. Bye, everybody. I love y'all. Love you, Eric. Bye. Love you, Michelle. Love you, too. He says, love you, Mama. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.